What's the closest you've ever been to dying? When I was 15, during an open heart surgery, my surgeon clipped my pulmonary artery. Three days after, I sat up in a high dependency unit and it collapsed. I lost seven pints of blood. You only have eight in your body. Obviously, I was having blood being pumped into me whilst this was happening. But yeah, 6th April 2002 will always be a cold day. I got amoebic dysentery as a kid. My mom, a nurse, told me how the doc scolded her because he asked her to get a stool sample and not a urine sample. She barked back, that is, was a stool sample because the diarrhea was so bad. I have memories of waking up in the middle of the night and I was in a hospital bed with IVs in my arms. Mom was sleeping in a cot at the end of the bed. I spent several days in the hospital from severe dehydration. Apparently, the only food I could keep down was cooked carrots, so they fed me a lot of them. Mom was surprised I still liked cooked carrots after eating so many. When I was 20, a metro bus ran a red light and smashed into the front of my Ford station wagon. The paramedics, police officers, and my parents were surprised I only had severe bruising where my seatbelt was. The front was like an accordion, and my heavy-duty carjack shot from my trunk to the passenger side front seat inches from me. After I was sent home, my parents went to collect my car, and my father said when my mother saw it, she screamed. When they got home, they just held on to me and almost refused to let me go back to the dorms. Months later, all healed and driving again for a while, my father showed me the picture of my car. I vomited immediately and wondered how I walked away from that. Almost 20 years later, it still amazed me. Did some stupid work as a stagehand rigger while not that old. I was waterproofing the roof of an outdoor stage, but I wasn't wearing any safety equipment because the operation I was working for at the time, well, they didn't have any and I didn't question it. For those not in the know, the roof of an outdoor stage is typically just some large, thick tarps suspended between the truss. Now, why was I close to dying? Well, I was climbing on top of the roof near the edge of a windy day doing waterproofing. This puts me in the precarious situation of being about 30 or 40 feet above the ground. Nothing too bad on a normal day because you can stay on the tarp and if you slip, then you will have a slide down the roof before colliding with the lower bar of the truss used for the construction of the roof. The wind caught the tarp. And what does a tarp do when it catches the wind? It fills in the same manner as a sail on a boat would. The tarp filled by the wind expanded upwards and took me with it. Within half a second, I was thrown about a foot up into the air with no control over my direction and nothing to really grab me onto once I came back down because there isn't really anything to grab onto on top of the roof of a stage. The only reason I am alive today is because I was lucky that I was tossed straight up and not slightly sideways. Had I been tossed even five inches sideways, I would have fallen down from the roof and gone splat. To put the cherry on top, the ground around the stage was littered with boxes and yet to be assembled stage parts. I would not have had a direct fall to the ground, no. I would have fallen down and probably speared myself on some random piece of stage. I was asleep on the couch after school and my friend showed up and basically forced me awake and into the car to go see some scary movie that had just come out. The Grudge? Maybe. Anyway, I get a call halfway through the movie of my mom hysterical because a giant oak tree had just fallen through the living room, splitting our trailer house in half. The couch I was asleep on was demolished directly under that tree. Almost drowned when I was around four. Dad went to a lake with me and fell asleep while sunbathing, and I ended up going way too deep in the water. I tried to chase my toy ball that was floating away when I noticed that I couldn't stand anymore without being fully underwater. I slightly panicked because it was really tough to swim back as I kept getting pushed back. Somehow, I still managed to get a less deeper water and ran back to my dad who was still napping. I didn't really care about the near-death experience anymore, if it can be called like that, but more about the ball I lost. I cried all day because of that damn ball that could have killed me, lol. Probably didn't realize how dangerous it actually was and that I was lucky. Sorry, this is hell long. Tried a new medication that was supposed to help me with my nightmares. I have the most nights, sometimes paired with sleep paralysis. Doctor said, start with one pill and you can up it to two if it doesn't help, but no more than that. Also, be careful because it can mess with blood pressure, especially the morning after taking it. So at this time, I'm living with my parents, preparing to move up north for a new job after graduating college. I try one pill and go to bed, wake up and go to our laundry room in the morning in the basement and am suddenly not okay. 
and I know I'm going to pass out, so I call for help. Both parents come running downstairs and manage to get me to the main floor while I'm flickering in and out of consciousness. Then I'm laying on the carpet while they try and get me to stay conscious, and I mumble to call an ambulance. My mom keeps trying, but the call won't go through, so she calls her sister who may be able to help. I remember I was so, so cold. I looked up at my mom and asked, am I going to die? She immediately starts reassuring me that I'd be okay, and she finally got through to an ambulance. She later told me that in that moment, I completely broke her heart. There she was looking down at her daughter, who was asking if she was going to die, while the emergency line chimed that the call wouldn't go through. The ambulance gets there. I'm finally starting to be able to stay conscious. The lady talks to me about what happens and asks how I'm feeling, and the guy takes my blood pressure, and his face just goes white, and he looks at her and says a number, can't remember it now, and she's pale too, and says it has to be a mistake, and she'll try just to be sure. She looks at it and says, yeah, I got the same thing. Then she turns to me. Sorry, honey, we thought we wouldn't have to take you in because you're doing better, but there's absolutely no way we can leave you here with your blood pressure that low. So my dad scoops me up and carries me to the ambulance, and I go to the hospital and basically have to wait until the medication is out of my system in case it happens again. My next doctor visit, I explained what happened and why I couldn't take the medication, and they let me know that unfortunately, just about every medication I could try for my nightmares had the same active ingredients, which was almost certainly what I reacted to. Ah oh well, better bad dreams than death, I suppose. I am a lighting tech, and I do a lot of touring work. A year ago, tomorrow, leap day, I was on a tour bus that crashed. I was the only one aside from the driver who was awake and vertical when it happened, as it was early in the morning. I had just woken up and gotten down from my bunk and was standing in the front lounge trying to put my shoes on when the bus hit the concrete barriers on the side of the road and jumped up. I was thrown across the cab and collided with the front wall of the bus in a shower of glass and debris. I broke six ribs, both my right shoulder bones and my face. The worst part was that the EMTs couldn't come onto the bus to rescue anybody until they had stabilized the bus. It had jumped up on top of the concrete barriers so that it was safe to board. I laid there bleeding out for more than an hour while the other survivors tried to keep me alive. I kept waking up, blind, asking, what happened? Whose blood is this? Before passing out again and again. Not mine, but I met a guy in closed section in mental facility who had taken shit ton of LSD and then tried to hang himself. He was hanging from a tree until his father held him up to cut him down from it. He was unresponsive two minutes after that. He had planned his suicide for weeks went to buy a rope for that after school one day. The rope was in his back bag for three days before he got a decent amount of LSD to commit his suicide. He explained he took so much because he thought it would be easier then, and while he was setting up his rope and everything he was texting his siblings via Facebook, who then contact his parents. He didn't tell her about what he was doing, but he was acting odd according to her words later on. He couldn't remember anything after he had taken all the LSD and it hit him all at once. He later put a picture together from reading his chats in FB. He had never done drugs before that. I almost got hit by a car who was doing 50 in a 20. I also double checked both ways before I crossed the road. There was a hill that kind of blocked out where cars came, so I thought it was safe to go. Right before I was at halfway, my friend told me to stop, and I turned around and I felt the car rush past me. There was no sign of them that slowed down or stopped at all. So, if it wasn't for my friend, I wouldn't be alive right now. Whitewater rafting accident. Went over in class four rapids with my little sister. We were hanging on the side of the raft in hypothermic temperatures. I got the boat kicked over toward the shore and started screaming at a fisherman. He caught my hand and we got the boat pulled in. It was the last takeout point for more than five miles. If we'd been even an inch further out, we all would have drowned. Last July, I got very sick. Mind you, this was when COVID was at its peak. I woke up Sunday morning with a mild cough. I blew it off thinking it would go away. By Tuesday, I had all the symptoms and 102 fever, so my husband took me to a small clinic. I don't have insurance, and as you know in the US, a visit to the clinic is like giving up an eyeball. Anyways, they take my temp, etc. A while later, I met with a doctor who tells me I definitely have COVID based on the symptoms. I start to cry and tell him I can't die. I have a four-year-old daughter and I can't leave her behind. Mind you, we've been very careful, not going out if not necessary, besides work and groceries. So they put an IUV and let me rest. Do they control my symptoms? 
I'm laying down in this dark room, crying, feeling like absolute shit, and telling myself, this is it. I'm going to die, and I won't even see my daughter. A couple hours later, they let me go home, and I would get a call letting me know the test results. Within the next two days, I lost my scent and taste. A day later, they tell me I came back negative. To this day, I still can't smell. Some may think I'm dramatic, but it wasn't a scary situation, especially thinking of my daughter. I have had a lot of injuries despite my relatively young age, 15. My worst injury was my first one too, but this is the only one where a lot of people would have died. I was too chilling in the kitchen and my mom was helping my nan prepare for my birth of my aunt. My mom was upstairs and left the iron on and unguarded. She's a good parent, just stressed since my nan was pregnant. So, being the small child I was, I think I knocked the iron off and it fell. My whole family isn't sure of how it happened to this day. So I think I touched it and I got a third degree burn and my skin was instantly pale white. So being small, I crawled to the stairs and cried very loudly. My mom, not realizing what happened, shouted down, just a minute. A few minutes later, she came to see why I was crying and realized instantly. This may make people uncomfortable, so I deeply apologize. But since my skin cells were completely dead, they had to get skin from somewhere else. So they took some skin from my leg and put it on my burn wound. A lot of babies that age would have died and I'm shocked I survived. I'm shocked I'm still alive right now considering all the times I could have died. Surfed my first hurricane when I was 15. I just picked up surfing about three months prior and it's a very tough sport to learn, especially when you used your 15 year old money to buy a short wrong board. Anyways, I'm surfing near a structure of rocks called a jetty. The jetty makes it easier to get out because a riptide will pull you out like a ski lift. Anyways, it rips me the hell out and I'm right into 15 foot waves. Now, off the Texas coast, actually having waves is tempting to a dumb 15 year old because learning to surf on a shortboard in three foot average swells is almost impossible. I thought real wave power would make the main difference. I was partially right. The first wave I encountered, I decided to ride because I didn't think I would be able to duck dive and would rather go into the jetty facing it than backwards. I catch the wave, stand and beef it. It takes me over the falls, and this is Texas, hurricane water, as in not blue in the movies. It's pitch black, and I know the jetty is coming with razor sharp rocks to greet me. Somehow, it must have been the rip current, but I don't hit the jetty. I stayed underwater with my board, despite its buoyancy, for like a full minute almost. But I pop up, alive, and belly ride the next wave in, and that was my first hurricane wave, but a near-death experience. Another close call was a few years later. I was much better prepared and skilled, but with that confidence comes higher risk. This time, I enter via a fishing pier. I had made a bad habit of catching a wave near the pier and surfing through the pier for a bit. Well, during a hurricane, the waves are much bigger and it displaces a lot more water. So the barnacle clusters on the pier become a way bigger issue. I was surfing through when my leash gets caught and the wave that caught me washes over me. So I was at the bottom of a big wave and am instantly held under 20-ish feet of water, which is jarring. Now, I could have just freed my leash and swam, but my broke ass didn't want to lose my board. So instead, I fight the leash free from the barnacles, cutting myself severely in the process, but I lived. During that same week, a woman decided to jump in with us at the end of the pier. As a weak swimmer and with no board, I have to give her my board and swim in. It was horrible. Those are the times I almost died. All had to do with dumb surfing decisions. Since shredding my teenage invincibility, I look at these stories very differently than I used to. Scary stuff. Sorry, mom. When I was nine, my friend group, around five people, were at a spot we went often to a rock spot in the woods and we were running around and crap. Then I fell. We were pretty much at the top of a hill and I kept falling. I eventually stopped, broke four ribs, had to be carried off before they went to one of their houses above was in a severe car accident. I hit a huge neon marquee sign head on going 65 miles an hour. I went head first through the windshield, ripped the steering wheel off and a huge piece of metal went through my kneecap and crushed it. I had so many cuts on my head, face and split my eyebrow in half so now my eyebrows are uneven. I have to pencil them in to even them out. I had so many stitches in my head they didn't keep track. I broke my wrist, my knee and a couple of fingers. It was a very traumatic experience I couldn't drive for over a year. I was on vacation with my family. 
We were in some room with a long table where we were eating. Looked like a shittier version of restaurant, but nobody except us was there because it belonged to the one who owned the place we stayed at. I had to go use the toilet, thinking about stuff, and as I was reaching to turn on the lights, someone shouted at me not to. Luckily, they shouted loud enough for me to stop daydreaming and not touch the switch. It was broken and uncovered wires that would probably have killed me if I touched them. 